welcome to the Trust the Plan podcast. I am Jim. And I'm Preston. And we are here today to talk about beneficiary IRAs. Pretty hot topic, right? <laughs> yeah, a <laughs> lot of law changes and ambiguity from the IRS on this topic over the last couple of years. <laughs> there is, but that's kind of what we thought we would touch on. It just came across a case study that seemed kind of interesting. Uh, and yeah, and it really came about, I think, uh, because of some of the, the changes over the last few years, right? When you when you used to inherit money in an IRA from a from a parent, typically, you could spread that that withdrawal out among the re- the remainder of your life, right? You could take a little bit out each year, you could take a lot out if you wanted, but you could spread that out over the course of your life. Is how that calculation was built. Well, now what did the law change do, Preston? Yeah. So now the law change. First of all, the law change was not very clear for the first couple of years. <laughs> Um, but yeah, now if you have a parent or someone pass away where they pass you down the money and it's not your spouse is the key piece here, but if you inherit some money in an IRA, they are going to force you to take a required minimum distribution each year. But then at the end of 10 years, the account has to be fully empty. So there's no more spreading it out over your entire life. After 10 years, that account balance has to be zero. Yeah. So yeah, so if that account balance has to be zero at the end of 10 years, you can look at it and say, well, am I better off to take it all out uh, in year one? Or am I better off to let it sit in the account and just continue to grow tax deferred and take it all out at the end? So this case study was from an individual that inherited $200,000. It's a high earner, so they're in the 35% bracket. So his the question is, should I take the money out in year one? Because what happened if you continue to grow the money within the portfolio and you remain in the 35% tax bracket, what are you paying in taxes when you pull the money out in 10 years? Right, 35. 35%. Or could even be more if the government raises taxes. <laughs> Potentially, it's the big <laughs> yeah. unknown, right? Right. Uh, versus the other alternative was say, well, what if I take the, all the money out now, pay 35% on it today, and then all the gains on that money now would be at capital gains rates. What are capital gains rates? If you're a high earner, 20%, but it's better than 35. Yeah, but for most people, it's 15. Right. Right, so that's the thinking. So basically went through the case study and did some math and said what what makes the most sense because the other thing you lose though, um, there's some tax drag, right? If you take all the money out now, there's less money there to earn on. so that's something to factor in as well. So anyway, the scenario was this, $200,000, take the, all the money out today, you in the 35% bracket, you're left with $130,000 to invest, okay? Um, rate of return assumptions for this example, not because we think this is what you'll get, but because it just a simple math is what if you just earn 10% over those next 10 years? What does that number grow to? So 135,000, just making 10%, at the end of that 10-year period would be worth $337,000. Good returns. Not bad, right? Yeah. Um, the other alternative would be to leaving the 200000 into the, the beneficiary IRA. We don't touch that money. We still earn 10%. And at the end of 10 years, that amount of money is worth 519000 So yeah. a lot more, right? I, I think right there shows you the power of how, having a bigger nest egg. Uh, 130 yeah. to 330 compared to 200 to five over 500. Yeah, definitely. The, the, yep, when you can make money on your invested money, that, that's the compounding effect, right? So then we have to look at it and say, well, what about taxes now? So now obviously we have more money in the beneficiary IRA, but we've not paid any tax on that money. Whereas the other uh, account, we have paid tax, but now have a lower tax rate in our capital gains to pay. Okay. So on the original $200,000 account, uh, if we go through and, and calculate out the gains, we would assume just about 207000 in gains at that point. Even if we use the 15% capital gains rate, it's 41000 in tax due. So that left you with $296,000 at the end of it all. Okay? The other scenario is the 519000 that remained in there. If we pull that out at the end of 10 years, which we have to, and we pay still in the 35% tax bracket, it leaves you with 337,000. So it's actually about 40,000 more having left the money in the IRA, benefited from the compounding and benefited from not the the tax drag, right? That you receive by 
paying all that tax up front. Yeah, that's very interesting. My first instinct before going through this exercise honestly would have been maybe it does make sense to pull it out now and just take the tax hit, but obviously the numbers don't work out that way. Yeah, so in this situation, um, it does appear that leaving it invested um, and benefiting from compounding uh, was, would result in more money. But does that mean that's our answer? No. <laughs> <laughs> right, just to confuse the situation. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily mean it's our, our answer because of the unknown, right? right. What kind of things can happen that we wouldn't plan for or be able to forecast? Yeah, I mean, if the government decides to raise taxes, if you get an income bump and now you're in a higher tax bracket, um, you or know, you, or you don't, you don't stay with the same job and you're in a lower tax bracket in the right. future. Right. Yeah. Or, you know, sequence of returns, something we talked about last mm -hmm. week. Um, but yeah, sequence of returns can be a big factor in this too. Yeah. So a lo lot of different things to think about. And, uh, you know, our goal wasn't today wasn't to give you uh, this is what you need to do every time because it's never like that. And, you know, all we can do is make assumptions, but it, just to give you something to think about, um, you know, if you find yourself in a situation where you will potentially be inheriting some money and wanting to know the best way to navigate this 10 year period, you know, what can we do about it? What, what looks to be our best um, uh, result? Uh, we're happy to walk through that with you. We're happy to go through different scenarios. We're happy to talk about uh, the different options and see what, what may uh, be the best fit for you in your unique situation. Yeah, absolutely. I, my biggest takeaway from this is never go on what your gut instinct is. Let's run the numbers and make <laughs> sure the numbers make sense. Yeah, yeah, because the way we, we originally talked about that, right, the, the thought of paying less tax on it, you know, taking it all out and then paying only 15% in the future seemed... Uh, Seemed like a, a good choice at, uh, at first, but you really got to put the work in on it. Yeah. So if you find yourself in that situation and you have money that you uh, believe to be inheriting or already have inherited and want to, to have a conversation with someone about uh, what your best course of action is, feel free to give us a call here at Peak Wealth Management and go on our website, peakwm.com. You can even schedule online, um, and we'd be happy to, to have that conversation and give you a second opinion. Yeah, happy to help.